Imagine being able to travel at the speed of light. Really short commute, huh? But think of this. You travel 186,000 miles in just one second. In other words, it would take you just a second to go around Earth seven and a half times. It seems like an awful waste of endless opportunities to me. Why not travel to space? But first things first, let's figure out how fast the speed of light is. Spoiler, it's very fast. It's the speed at which light travels in a perfect vacuum, and it's 671 million miles per hour. It takes sunlight on average 8 minutes and 17 seconds to travel all the way from the sun to Earth. Why don't we, humans, explore space at the speed of light? Well, in short, the laws of physics make it impossible. Let's ignore this insignificant detail for now and imagine we can move at the speed of light. The Moon is almost 239,000 miles away from our planet. This distance is the same as 30 Earths placed side by side. If you were traveling to our planet's natural satellite at the speed of light, it would take you just a bit more than one second to reach your destination. For comparison, if you decided to drive to the moon without breaking speed limits at about 65 miles per hour, it would take you almost 3,700 hours, which is 154 days or more than five months. Venus is the closest planet to Earth. On average, the distance between the morning star and our planet is 25 million miles. That's 1,000 times as long as the distance around Earth. Still, while traveling at the speed of light, you'd need just two minutes before you landed your spacecraft on Venus. It might be just enough time to munch on a big burrito. On the other hand, if Venus was on the other side of the Sun, it would take you 15 minutes to reach it and that time is enough to have a proper meal. If you had to use a car, the trip to Venus would take you almost 400,000 hours, which is about 44 and a half years. The smallest ever observed distance between Earth and Mars is 35 million miles. The average distance is around 140 million miles. And the greatest distance reaches 250 million miles, which is 1,000 times the distance from Earth to the Moon. Anyway. Let's imagine it's your lucky day and you have to travel the smallest distance. Then you need a bit more than 3 minutes to step on the reddish Martian sands. If you travel to the red planet by car at a speed of 65 miles per hour, well, you're gonna want to bring a big lunch. You would spend 540,000 hours, which is more than 62 years, in your vehicle. Better change your oil while you can. The average distance between Mercury and Earth is 48 million miles, which is 10,000 times as long as the distance between Los Angeles and New York. Traveling at the speed of light, you'd spend almost four and a half minutes to reach your destination. You can watch two official movie trailers during this time. By car, oh boy, you would need 740,000 hours or more than 85 years to make a one-way trip. It's time to travel to our one and only Sun, which is almost 93 million miles away from Earth. But when you travel at the speed of light, this distance doesn't seem so huge anymore. It would take you just a bit more than 8 minutes to get to the Sun's surface. Ow! It's hot! 8 minutes? That's almost enough to watch a YouTube video. Traveling by car is another story. You would be stuck in it for about a million and a half hours. It makes 165 years in space way too long. You visited all the nearest sites, and it's time for longer trips. How about traveling to Jupiter? The distance between this planet and Earth varies, with the smallest being 365 million miles and the greatest more than 600 million miles. Let's assume you don't have to travel that far. Even so, you'd need about 32 minutes to reach the largest planet in the solar system. That time is enough to have a nap. But if you went by car, you would spend several lifetimes to cover the distance, which is 150,000 times as long as the Mississippi River. To be precise, it would take you almost 650 years. Wow! But Jupiter is by no means the furthest you can go. Saturn is about 750 million miles away from Earth at its closest. That's 3,000 distances from our planet to the Moon. And still, if you traveled at the speed of light, you wouldn't even have enough time to watch your favorite movie. The entire journey would take a bit more than an hour. By car? Well, 
you would spend more than 1,300 years to reach Saturn. That's what I call a long-haul flight. Better hope they have meal service and some entertainment. And now, let's use that speed of light to the fullest and go to Uranus. Get your spaceship thoroughly checked, because you'll have to travel 1.6 billion miles. That's the closest Uranus has ever been to Earth. Thanks to your lightning-fast speed, the trip wouldn't take too much time, just a bit more than two hours. By car, hmm, you'd need almost 3,000 years to reach Uranus. It's 150,000 times as long as the Apollo 11 mission. Be careful, at one point, you might get bored. With your ability to move at the speed of light, you could even travel to the outskirts of the solar system, toward the Oort cloud. Rumor has it the Oort cloud might contain more than a trillion, that's one million million, comets. You'd need three years to reach that faraway place. That's enough to see all the movies on your to-watch list, read at least a hundred books, or write your own one. Now, don't even consider driving to the Oort cloud. It would take you millions of years to reach your destination. You can also visit the closest to Earth star other than the Sun, Proxima Centauri. It's more than 24 trillion miles away from our planet. That's 24 with 12 zeros. No worries, I get confused too. But if you decide to set off on such a journey, be ready to spend four years to get there. A road trip to Proxima Centauri would take 44 million years. Your trips get longer and longer. You're about to visit the center of our home Milky Way galaxy. The thing is really big, more than 100,000 light years in diameter and another 1,000 light years thick. By the way, remember, one light year is the distance light travels in a year, and it's about 6 trillion miles. Plus, the Milky Way galaxy is home to 400 billion stars and even more planets. To get to the center of the Milky Way, you would have to travel a distance of 25,000 light years. Even at the speed of light, it would still take you, guess what? 25,000 years. By car, it would take a bit longer. Make up a number that's still too small. But say you're getting ambitious. Why not visit the closest to Earth large spiral galaxy? That'll be the Andromeda galaxy. In this case, you need to pack as many supplies and entertainments as possible, because the trip would take two and a half million years. Me? Well, I think long before this point, I'd just bail and go visit Niagara Falls. Hey, if you learned something new today, then give the video a like and share it with a friend. And here are some other videos I think you'll enjoy. Just click to the left or right, and remember, stay on the bright side of life!